All right, guys, let's freaking go. I'd say I'm only about like 75% today, but I have a lot of energy <clears throat> because this is an episode of Bleach or episodes that I've been really waiting for. The reveal of the first Kempachi. I did not remember this happening so early and I am so hyped up right now. Let's go. The next couple episodes of Bleach are going to be nutty. How many of you knew that Unahana was the first Kenpachi, huh? Leave that in the comments. That's your question of the day. Did you know that Unahana was the first Kenpachi? I would love to know. Because I'm sure a lot of you are manga readers, but some of you might not be. So I really want to know that. But oh boy, it's going to be so hype. Oh, uh, we're eating good. Bleach fans are eating good, man. And even the stuff with Ichigo and Renji. <clears throat> With them recovering and going to meet the man that created the Zanpakuto. Let that sink in. The weapon that defines the Soul Society, basically. They're about to meet the man that created it and get trained by him. Let that thought sink into you. Because that's nutty, too. Like, it's going to be a crazy couple weeks. So, let's just get straight into it and talk about Bleach Thousand Year Blood War episode what, nine today? Because it's, it's a crazy one. So our episode begins with Nano walking in on a clearly troubled Shunsui as he tells her that we might have to say goodbye to each other. And why is he troubled, you ask? Because it's revealed that he was picked to be the next head captain and captain of Squad 1. And he does not want that responsibility, <laughs> to say the least. I want you all to imagine Shunsui just as the head captain for a second. Just imagine that in your heads. It's definitely something. But it's here we transition to Ichigo getting drowned in the name of training. And he's not exactly thrilled about it. And now Tenjiro is sick of Ichigo's bitching and complaining. So he does what any good doctor would do and sends him flying with a punch, naturally. And as Ichigo gets up, he tells him, you're healed. If you weren't, that would have killed you. As he tells him, you finished what you came here to do. I'll prepare you to go to the next place. But it's here we get an unexpected voice as we hear Renji say, Wait, I'm coming with you. As Tendro walks up to Renji and looks at him in the face, and he don't look too good, to be honest. And he does his great doctor practice yet again of punching him right in the gut. But Renji eats it. He eats it, I'll be honest. As Renji says, well, you didn't send me flying, did you? As Tenjiro tells him, fine. If you can withstand my punch, you're probably all right to go. And it's here they send Renji and Ichigo off to the next palace in the goofiest way possible yet again. Team Rocket's blasting off yet again, guys. And as Tenjiro shows Renji and Ichigo off, he thanks his assistants who take off their suits and they're scarred all over their bodies as we realize that this water is more deadly than we initially thought, as they say, if it weren't for these protective bathing robes made of super spiritual threads, the water would have caused our bodies to erode and rupture. Yet those boys were able to soak in the white bone hell and blood pond hell naked as if it was nothing. As Tenjiro says that, I saw their potential, but they went beyond my expectations. Especially that Ichigo kid. When that punk took my strike, he, reflex he reflexively struck my fist and fractured it. As he says, people used to call me lightning fast Tenjiro. I'm pretty sure I haven't lost my touch yet. But that kid is really something. I can see why the Soul King is so into him. But it, but it's here we transition to Central 46, where our boy Shunsui is already trying to break the mold as he tells them that, yeah, I want two lieutenants, by the way. <laughs> he says Third Seed Okaba knows how to manage Squad 1, while Lieutenant Issei knows how to handle me. <laughs> He's not ready to let Nanao go. He's not. He wants to bring her with him. But it's here we transition to the real reason that he's in front of Central 46, as he tells them that, I intend to teach Kenpachi Zaraki Zanjutsu, 
and they all flip out. As he says, the Captain Kuchki and the others went to the royal palace, but there's no guarantee they'll return safely. Captain Zaraki is an important asset, asset in battle. We cannot leave him as he is now. And everyone there is opposed to it because they're worried that if he becomes even more powerful, that if he revolts against them, they're not going to be able to stop him. But Shun Sui's got to hit him with a bit of facts right here as he says, in our current state, the Soul Society won't be able to withstand the next invasion. Will any of you be able to protect yourselves? And that shuts them all up very quickly. As Shun Sui turns around and says, come on in. I'd like you to handle this matter con concerning Captain Zaraki, Captain Unahana, or should I say, the first Kempachi, Yachiru Unihana. And let me just say, guys, hype. And as Ichigo and Renji are coming to the next palace, we see that Cohen actually hits the ride with them and has been coming along with them as they arrive at the palace of Kiro. Of Kirio, who says, Welcome to my Gatondin, Ichigo and Renji. I'm gonna take good care of take good care of you both. And what does take good care of them mean, you say? Well, it's making some food for them and making a giant feast for them. And I gotta be real, guys, this shit made me hungry looking at it. It looks good. Now Cone, who's with them, is like, damn, this looks good. Let's eat. But Ichigo stops him and says, There's no way. She'd serve us this food for no reason. I bet it's an excuse to start some ridiculous form of training. As we just hear Kirio say that, seems you grew up distrustful thanks to Kisuke Urahara. And yo, I'm thinking true. As she tells him that there's no need to worry. My Gatondin is a palace of food. My job is to ensure your bellies are full. And your job is to stuff your bellies. And upon hearing that, Ichigo and Renji start going to town on this food, dude. And we get our classic shonen food montage where they're just devouring this shit. And it's always gross to watch, but damn, that food looks good. <laughs> but eventually, Ichigo stops and asks Renji, like, hey, should we really be doing this right now? Everyone in the Serate is training right now to prepare for the next battle. While we're here taking baths, eating food, and just fooling around, will doing this really make us strong enough for the next battle? And Renji here, like a bro, tells Ichigo straight up, like, are you really that dumb? We were both injured in battle, so we took a bath to heal our wounds. When our wounds healed, we got hungry. That's why we're eating now. It makes perfect sense. We're building up our strength to prepare for the tough training that lies ahead. And Ichigo's just like, damn, Renji, you actually make a good point every once in a while. <laughs> so they just start going to town on the food yet again. And it's here we hear Kirio say that Renji's right. I guess it's only natural for a lieutenant to figure it out. And as she comes out of the curtain, let me speak for everyone when I say, God damn! As she says, what we're doing right now is no different than getting ready for any other training. The only difference is it's being done on a Soul King scale. Our rituals are packed with the Soul King's power and the million year history of the Soul Society. It's on a whole other level from the healing and diet that you know in the Serate. But let's just say Ichigo and Renji are a little, uh, distracted, to say the least. As they're just like, who the hell are you? And she's just like, oh, this? I use all my spiritual pressure when I cook. So I'm so after I'm done cooking, I always lose a lot of weight. As we just see Grain King, Kirio Hikifuni. And I speak for everyone again when I'm like, yo, please don't have spiritual pressure from now on. <laughs> I bet some of y'all weren't expecting that, were you? Someone that would give Rangiku a run for her money. <laughs> but as Ichigo and Renji are leaving, she tells them, be careful. Remember how I told you our ritual was packed with the history of the Soul Society? As she says that every one of us in Squad Zero has created something in the Soul Society. And those that are recognized as being the history of the Soul Society itself by the Soul King are allowed to join Squad Zero. 
And it's here that she starts explaining what she's done and what she created is actually crazy. And a lot of you already know, as she says, what I've created was a temporary soul and the technology to place it inside of a body. The concept of Geekon did not exist until I created a temporary soul. And part of that concept was applied to create soul candies. The essence of Geekon is to increase one's level of power by placing a completely foreign spiritual pressure into your own body. The food you just ate was filled with that essence. Your body should now contain spiritual pressure that is nothing like you felt before. As she adds on that, I still want you to be cautious. The one in the next palace is totally unpredictable. Your next stop is Holden, where Oetsu Nimaiya resides. He is the man who created Zanpakuto. He's a big deal. But it's here we really get into the crux of our episode today. As we transition to underground in the Great Prison at the lowest level, the Mukon. As we just see Kenpachi there as he says, this is a rather grandiose stage, isn't it? As we just hear, it was the head captain's orders. As its name suggests, Mukon is completely closed off. This is the only place suitable for you to freely swing your sword. Otherwise, they would never have allowed us non-criminals to enter this place. As Kenpachi just laughs and says, non-criminals, huh? Look who's talking. If you and I weren't powerful, we'd just be ordinary criminals. As we see that he's been talking to Unahana, baby, it's about to get real. As she says, right now, you have no power. I picked this place because I felt you would fit in perfectly. As Kenpachi's like, fine by me. Win as a captain or lose as a criminal. It doesn't matter if I live or die fighting you. It's still going to be an eternal hell. As Unahana tells him that, damn, I like you better when you're quiet. Because when I hear your voice... The single scar you gave me begins to ache. As Kenpachi says, don't think you're the only one that has an aching scar. As she, as you guys get told that, he, she's the one that gave him the scar on the face. They exchange one look between each other. And then the fight begins, baby. But it's here we transition to Shuhei real quick as he says, Yachiru Unahana. The original 13 court guard squad, said to be the strongest in history. She served as the captain of Squad 11 and created the basis of what Squad 11 is today. She was the most notorious criminal in the history of the Soul Society. To show her mastery of the sword and her complete proficiency with the blade, she gave herself the name Yachiru, which means 8,000 styles. Unahana is an absolute monster with the sword. As Shunsui says, I'm sorry I called it a Zanjutsu lesson. Once you and Captain Zaraki cross blades, one of you will have to die. As we transition back to the fight, and Unahana is an absolute savage. As we see that Unahana left a letter to Isane, and that Kenpachi left his eye patch for Yachiru. And as these two continue fighting, Unahana 100% has the advantage over Kenpachi. As she tells him, I commend you for removing your eye patch from the start. But even if you remove it, this is the extent of your power. As she just keeps landing blow after blow on him. As she says that I can't believe someone swinging a sword with one arm wouldn't make use of the other arm. I can't imagine you're enjoying this fight. As Kenpachi tells her that you've changed quite a bit. From the person I admired. As she says, how dare you admire the enemy in mid-battle. As she completely disarms Kenpachi and says, I haven't changed at all. But when I last fought you, I didn't have the leeway to use such te- cheap tricks against you. As Kenpachi realizes that she's saying that he's grown weak. And it's here we get a flashback from Kenpachi as he says, I admired you. Trees, bugs, people, no matter what I cut, it was all the same. 
It was no different from swinging a sword while alone in the dark. Fighting you was the first time I felt fear. I felt the joy of battle for the first time. I wanted to fight just like you. But you're saying I'm going to die here without ever beating you as Kenpachi actually sheds tears as she stabs through his throat with her sword. But it was an illusion the entire time. As she tells him, you look like you spaced out for a moment. And that is, her presence is so strong that Kenpachi felt like he died right then and there. That's how strong her presence and spiritual pressure are right now. How intimidating she is. He felt like he was just killed when he wasn't. Even he doesn't understand what happened, but he says, screw it. I don't have time to think. Right now, I need to focus on this battle and nothing more. Azunahana says, Kenpachi Zaraki, you will not die. Each time you're on the verge of death, you grow stronger. That is the flaw you put upon yourself. But it is also my sin, as our episode ends. And what an absolutely insane episode. Oh my lord. I've How many, seriously, I want y'all to answer me in the comments. How many of y'all actually knew that Unahano was the first Kenpachi? I did. And I got so hyped last week when Tenjiro approached her. I was like, oh, dude, we're going to get that soon. I didn't think it'd be the very next episode, though. Oh, this is one of the things I definitely remember from the manga. This fight right here. It's epic as hell. I guarantee a lot of you guys are seeing Unahana in a completely different light after this week. And I think it's great. Oh man, we're going to be eating so good the next couple weeks. Even this aside, like the stuff with Ichigo and Renji, like I said before too, is also very interesting and going to be a little eye-opening actually, I'm sure. <laughs> so everyone get excited for that as well. But man, Bleach is on fire recently. It's crazy. It's crazy how Bleach can come back after 10 years and just recapture the hype that it had all those years ago and arguably exceed it like it's crazy i'm so happy right now and i hope you guys are too so again let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode because this shit was nutty but i can't wait till next week so until then guys i hope you have a great day week month and year and just deuces have a blessed day and get ready for more greatness I'll see you guys next time.